I was looking through my makeup collection the other day and I saw my old Rowan quads and I thought to myself, I have not used these in like a year. And I don't know why, they were so pretty. They were like some of my favorite eyeshadow formulas of about two years ago. And that inspired this video to do a full face of products that I pretty much entirely forgot about. And at the end of the video, I think I'm gonna rank like what products are gonna make my makeup collection that I'm gonna force myself to use more regularly and what products maybe I should just go ahead and declutter. The first product that I have is the Fit Glow Foundation. This is in the shade F2. Now this is a pretty good shade match for me. It's maybe a little bit yellow, but I remember the reason I never reach for this is because it always makes me look really dewy at the end of the day. Definitely more of the kind of foundation if you like that kind of glossy, dewy, really hydrated looking skin. You know, I tend to prefer something that's it's a little bit more of a natural finish, satin finish. And also I haven't been wearing a ton of foundation lately because I've just been doing like a little bit of spot concealing. I've been having such, as you can see, such awful breakouts because of some gut issues that I'm dealing with, trying to figure them out. My doctors think it's SIBO. And I just really don't like to wear a ton of foundation on my face when I'm having a lot of breakouts. Oh man, but look how pretty it is when it first goes on. It just gives you like, really healthy looking skin. You know, I don't think I've used this foundation with the Fit Glow powder that came out and you could just use whatever's in your collection, anything that's more of a heavy duty powder. I've heard the By Terry is very similar to the Fit Glow powder and it's a really heavy duty, like super blurring kind of powder and I haven't paired those together. So maybe that could be the solution for me to kind of control the shine just a little bit. I think when my skin's breaking out like this, it just really highlights how great this foundation is where I can wear a full coverage product that's a foundation all over the face that still just looks like so natural, so skin-like, not cakey, not heavy. It doesn't settle into like any pores or texture. I mean, it's Fit Glow. They make the best complexion products that personally I've ever tried in my entire life, so it's not surprising. We'll see how it looks at the end of the video though. I remember it gets pretty dewy looking. I'm just gonna do a little bit of spot concealing off camera because this is gonna take me like 10 minutes to get all my spots. And the only product I ever use for that is the Makeup Forever Full Cover Concealer, and I will never forget about this baby. An under eye concealer that I forget about is the Cool Fee Concealer. This is in the shade Ice Ice Berry. And I just never reach for this under my eyes. I always put it on my face in place of foundation. I'll just kind of strategically dot it around my face. I don't know if you can see, but it is quite a bit yellow in comparison to the Fit Glow Foundation. I have cool pink undertones in my skin. So it does look a little bit off with the rest of my face. Um, unfortunately, they just don't have a lighter shade. So I definitely reach for this product all over my face, but I don't think I'm gonna repurchase it until they have a shade expansion. And I think you saw it just blends in two seconds. It's really creamy. It has a medium coverage. I do prefer something a little more full coverage under my eyes, but I mean, I think it looks beautiful, creamy, hydrating, almost a little bit blurring. It just has a beautiful texture. I just wanna see more shades. And if I had my best match, I think I would be reaching for this under the eyes rather than just all over the face. The next product I've totally forgotten to reach for is the Say Sun Melt Bronzer in Light Bronze. I've always really loved the texture of this bronzer. I like to use my fingers first and I kind of just like warm it up a little bit, then I'll blend it with a brush. The texture of this is phenomenal. I feel like it has a beautiful, kind of natural satin finish. It's the kind of product I wish came in multiple different formulas, or sorry, the same formula, but like if they came in a blush, if it came in some kind of like highlighter, I feel like this formula is so good that we just, we deserve it in like a bunch of different types. Because it has that skin-like finish, it's blendable. It looks almost blurring on the skin. That's what I like. It almost seems to, to perfect the skin in a way. Oh, it's so pretty. The thing is for me, I fell in love with the Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer in the shade Light Medium, and I just can't reach for any cream bronzer over that. But as I'm looking at the Say Sun Melt on my face right now, I'm just reminded of how beautiful the formula is. For me though, it is a little too orange. If I apply just a little bit too much of this, I find that I end up really having to like blend it down my neck because these really warm undertones just don't match me super well. But obviously I'm just being really picky. This, this works great. I just have to have a little bit more of like a subtle hand than I do with the Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer. So it's a really good product. I just think it's a better product if you have warmer undertones. I gotta take my bra off, my straps keep showing. Much better, okay. Is my skin perfect right now? No, but I feel like it looks pretty good. I only own two eyebrow pencils, so I definitely don't ever forget about those. This one's the L'Oreal, which is my favorite. It's the Brow Stylist Definer, a blush 
I always forget about is the Victoria Beckham Cheeky Posh. Oh no, I dropped it. That was so really dramatic. And the shade Mini Skirt. Look how beautiful this is. Oof. I have really accurate natural lighting today, so that's definitely an accurate depiction of the color. Just a warm brown kind of shade that's not orangey, it leans more red. I love this color. This just does not last on my face. And I'll show you now by the end of the video, it's gonna be gone from my skin. And that's what's interesting about this is this is actually one of the more stiffer blush formulas I've tried. And I know a lot of people have said that they don't like this formula because it's a stiffer cream. It's a little bit harder to blend. I've heard some people, maybe Hannah Louise Poston said that they found this patchy because of the stiffness of the formula. And I totally hear what they're talking about, but I just find that I need a little bit of that stiffness in cream formulas if it's gonna last on my skin. Those dewier, more emollient formulas just fade super quickly. So this lasts longer than most cream blushes on my skin, but still my face just eats blush and they're like, what can I do about it? Just for shits and giggles, I'm gonna see if I really build this up on the apple of my cheek, if it stays by the end of the video. Let's just do a little test here and see how it goes. That's I think as much as we should go on the blush and then we'll see if it can last on my face by the end of the video. A highlighter I have totally forgotten about is the Phytosurgent Spectral Shine Balm. This is in the shade Divine Daylight an absolutely beautiful kind of tan champagne shade. And I apply it with the Phytosurgeon's Sky Buff brush. The thing is, okay, I echo everything that Hope Mess Tom said in a recent video where they ranked like all of their makeup from worst to best, or maybe the other way around. Here's the thing about this product. It is really finicky to use. It's the kind of product where you have to go to the website and you have to really read the instructions if you wanna be able to use it properly. If you just go in with a finger, you like barely feel like you're picking up any product. It looks a little bit chunky on the skin. It doesn't look very shiny. It's definitely a bomb like the name suggests. It's like a cross between a powder and a bomb. So it's a very interesting, unique texture. I really liked this at first when I got it because I felt like there was nothing like it that I had tried before. It was something really new. And I'm the kind of person who just really gravitates towards innovation towards formulas I've never touched before and I find that really satisfying. And the website says that you really wanna take a kind of stiff brush and swirl a lot with a little bit of pressure to get the right amount of product. And I just found that over time, as I was using the Spectral Shine Balm, it just really wasn't as intuitive and as cosmetically elegant as I thought it was gonna be. So you can see, I am definitely getting some payoff there. It looks pretty, it's very subtle, but sometimes, depending on what products I use, it can really kind of start looking chunky on the skin. I don't know if you'll be able to see it a little bit right there, but actually this looks better than it normally does. So I'm pretty impressed and maybe I won't declutter it like I thought I was going to. So I'm trying and trying to build this up and that is just really, as much shine as you're gonna get from this product. So for me, I just kind of feel like it doesn't really deserve a place in my collection when I have so many other highlighters that are much easier to use. And now I have no blush. I have no blush left. Just in case the Spectral Shine Balm took the blush away, I'm gonna add more because I really wanna see how long this lasts on its own. Moving on to eyes, we have the Rowan Quads, which I'm really excited for. I'm gonna go in with 75 degrees today because I do have to go run an errand right now and I don't wanna be wearing like pink or like gunmetal blue on my eyes. I already don't like going to town and wearing any makeup on my face, but wearing like a glittery eyeshadow, I'm gonna get a lot of looks. There's one bar in town, there's one restaurant, like. Shit is remote. On the screen, I'm gonna link my 1111 review because 1111 is one of my favorite palettes. I love the color story in this. The colors are so pretty. I just think Nikki DeRost is like a total genius. I think she's amazing. So sad that she left the company. But for today, I definitely wanna go in. No, you know what? I wanna wear pink today, bitch. I'm doing 1111. I haven't worn this in so long and I'm just feeling really into these tones right now. Um, if you wanna see me apply and review 75 degrees, I'm pretty sure I did a video that I'll link on the screen. I have a bunch of content with the 52 degrees palette. I love this one as well. My favorite shade is this blue, this kind of gunmetal blue shade. It's like my favorite like wintertime event eye, but I just have totally forgotten about it this year. These work best with your fingers. This is not a brush situation. You really have to almost dig your fingers in there so you can see anyone who owns these has like fingerprints in them. I like to describe these as adult finger painting with glitter. That's the way that I experience these shadows. And I'm gonna go in with my favorite one, which is this beautiful rose shade. And you know what? They feel the same. They don't feel like they've dried out at all. I mean, leave it to Nikki to make something long lasting and perfect. Oh, damn it. Damn it, that's good. Damn it, that's good. Yup. Oh, 
the reflection, that foiled kind of textured look. And they're so easy to blend with your fingers. And then I go in and just kind of like correct the edges, but they don't last on the eyes. I mean, this will crease very quickly. I'm gonna do a little bit of blending with a brush. I think another reason I forgot about the Rowan quads is they're like gone from all major retailers. They left Sephora. I'm pretty sure you can only get them on like Revolve and Blue Mercury right now. And I really don't shop for makeup on either of those sites. And since the founder Nikki left, they also have changed the formula. So what I think happened is I think Nikki was pushed out of the company or she left because they were trying to push her in a direction that she didn't want. It was like a very abrupt departure for a brand new company. And so I think she and her co-founder took the formulas with them. I think that there was some kind of deal made where they were allowed to keep selling the products that Nikki had helped to formulate and create and that the brand had to launch their own formulas that were slightly different, AKA a little bit worse after she left. Because if you try the liquid lip balms in the old formula, they are perfection in a lip product. And the new ones just are a little bit gritty. They're not the same. They're not as nourishing. And the new formula of the quads is like really a lot slippier. There's not as much texture. There isn't that like glittery foiled effect. The new ones are like a totally different formula. So it's a little bit disappointing. Like once you fall in love with the product and then you know that they're not gonna make that again, it's just kind of a little bit of a bummer. That's kind of, I think why I fell out of love with these. They're definitely a little bit messy. Like it's not my best application process, but no one comes to my video for good eyeshadow application. That's for damn sure. So I don't feel too bad about it. I'm gonna go in with Max Shroom. I always forget to do a little bit of an inner corner highlight. This is something I used to do more in college, but recently I did it the other day when I did a YouTube short for the, uh, what was it? The cold girl makeup look. And I was reminded of how good Shroom is. It's just, it brightens up a little bit. It's not too bright. It's just like a sheer shimmery white inner corner highlight. And I think it's really pretty and I wanna use it more, so that's gonna to be top of mind. I'm just gonna take a little bit of the middle shade from Chocolate Dahlia from the Kaja eyeshadow trio. I really don't like using the Rowan quads under my eyes because I get such terrible glitter fallout when I do that. I think Mariah Leonard really puts a lot of glitter on her lower lash line and she makes it look really like effortlessly cool and kind of intentional, but I don't feel like I can pull that off quite as much. Now I'm gonna powder. I'm gonna go in with my kind of forgotten Charlotte Tilbury what is it? Um, Airbrush Flawless Finish Skin Perfecting Micro Powder in Fair. I run through this really quickly, even though I don't really use it that often. It's a nice powder, don't get me wrong. Um, it's the kind of, is it a finishing powder? Yeah, so I'm gonna say it's a finishing powder, not a setting powder, which means it's not really gonna control oil and shine throughout the day, but it is just gonna finish the skin off and make it look a little bit blurred and a little bit more perfected. And I totally do agree with that about it. But I mean, as far as powders go, I think this is beautiful. It looks really nice on the skin. I do find though that I run through it really quickly. I don't have any mascaras that I forgot about because I only own the Maybelline and the Thrive. I'm using the Maybelline Lash Sensational Sky High Mascara. It's the one I think it's called Washable Black. It's definitely my favorite. For lips, I keep forgetting to reach for my Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat in Pillow Talk. It's beautiful. It seriously is like one of my favorite formulas, but I feel like better formulas have come out recently. I love the Tower 28 lip liners, the Makeup Forever Artist Pencil. Is that what it's called? I can't remember. In Wherever Walnut, Ugh, the Citizen Cosmetics Lip Stroke. And then honestly, I think my favorite formula is probably the Fit Glow Pencils. So I just have so many others that I reach for. I find that the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheats are like a little waxy, like a little overly waxy. I prefer something a little bit more creamy, even though a waxier formula is gonna last longer and it's gonna be a lot more easy to do an overline. I just really love the creaminess of those other pencils. See what I mean by waxiness? Like when I press my lips together, it kind of sticks together. That's the waxiness. And I just kind of prefer the feeling of something a little bit creamier, but it lasts a long time. So it kind of depends on your preference. A product I've been constantly forgetting about, you're gonna be shocked, is the Fit Glow Lip Serums. I know, I've said that they are my favorite makeup item of all time. It's just that there have been so many amazing lip product launches, I feel like in the last year and a half that I've totally fallen in love with. And I've been wearing more lipsticks lately, so I haven't been reaching for my like liquid lip balms. This is in the shade T. It's basically my lip color. It's just like a beige. So it kind of just like goes with any lip liner I choose. 
Mm, so good. Oh, it's so comfortable and cushiony and gel-like mm, and so nourishing. And it just kind of forms this beautiful cushiony seal over your lips. It feels so good. But the reason I haven't been reaching for the Ficla Lip Serums is because the formula has been inconsistent. And you know that I'm a Ficla affiliate. Like, I love their products. I love them. But their lip serums sometimes have this kind of really nice earthy smell that I've always really liked. Lately though, their lip serums have been smelling a little bit floral. And I talked to the founder about it. She said that because they don't add any fragrance, it's all just a naturally occurring vanilla in the serum. They can't control the amount of vanilla fragrance in the product. And basically they said that the vanilla that they use kind of depends on the climate, much like a wine that you might drink, how the grapes and the taste of the wine depend on the weather that year. Like if it was a dry year, if it was a wet year, cold, etc. So currently the vanilla that they're getting is not really smelling like anything. And it ends up pulling a little bit floral because of some of the extracts that are in their lip serum. I'm not a floral perfume wearer. I just really don't like anything floral, but I love anything gourmand, anything kind of like vanilla-y, fruity, cake batter shit, you know, that kind of stuff. So I haven't been reaching for the Ficla lip serums because I personally have been a little bit scared to recommend them, put my name on them, put my stamp of approval on them, and then have people get back to me and say, hey, well, I had a really different experience. Mine smelled floral, you said they're vanilla. You know, I get a little bit hesitant um, to really put out there how much I love them. If I know that there are some inconsistencies right now in the formula, they're trying to see if they can adjust the formula to provide a more consistent experience without changing the performance of the lip serum. So because there are inconsistencies, I just haven't been talking about them recently. And what I'm using on camera generally reflects what I'm using in my real life. So if I'm not really sharing something with followers as much, I tend then not to reach for it as much in my real life, but I love them. They're amazing, they really are. Okay. Let's rank everything. I talked enough about the lip serums. We're good there. I'm definitely gonna keep reaching for my Charlotte Tilbury lip pencil more. This is a little bit pinkier though than I remember. I thought Pillow Talk was a little bit more subdued, a little bit more mauve, but now I remember it's actually like super, super pink. If I wanted to reach for this formula more, I probably should have some kind of nude or brown shade in my collection. I've pretty much only been wearing brown lip liners lately, so that's why, but I'm definitely gonna be keeping this one. I think it is time to declutter the, oh no, the <laughs> Phytosurgeon Spectral Shine Balm. It's definitely pretty. It just makes my skin look like I have really nice skincare on, um, but I think I have other products that do that. Because this can be a little bit chunky on the skin, you can't really build it up any more than this. My mirror fell off. There's glue all around the outside of the pan. It's tricky to use. I just, I think that I can let this one go. The Say Sun Melt Bronzer though, I'm really reminded in this video of how beautiful this product is. I think that my skin looks very natural. This is a little bit orange on my face in person, but I applied it so lightly that I really don't think it's an issue, especially if I'm wearing something with a high neck. If I wore a V-neck, I don't think I'd be able to wear this product because it's just a little too orange, but man, it really does look so beautiful on the skin. So I'm definitely gonna be keeping this and wearing it more often. The Rowan Quads, oh, I love them. I'm so glad that I just randomly found these again the other day in my palette drawer which is a drawer that I never ever open. So I'm gonna be moving these into my daily eyeshadow drawer with all of my single shadows and get more use out of them there. Let me just show you how they crease though. So hopefully you can see that they do start moving around very quickly. You can just pat them out if you want, but honestly, whatever. Max Eyeshadow and Shroom, absolutely gonna be reaching for this more. I don't know, I do kind of like a little subtle inner corner moment. So really glad that I picked that one up. The Kulfi concealer, I just feel like my under eyes don't have the coverage that I want them to have. When I look in the mirror, I can really see the darkness coming through my eyes. I don't really like that look, um, but I love this all over the face. Victoria Beckham Cheeky Posh and Mini Skirt. Man, I never thought I would let go of this, but look at my face. I mean, do you feel that my blush is gone? Because to me, I can barely see blush on my face. And if it can't last 40 minutes, what's the point of owning it? I will say though, I just purchased a ton of products from Vive and there's a powder blush in there called Plaza that I ordered. And I'm pretty sure it's the same color as this, just with a little bit of shimmer in a powder form. So I'm very excited to try that out because if I can find this color in a powder, then I can let this go. And lastly, 
the Fit Glow Foundation. It is quite a bit dewier than I usually than I usually go for in my videos. Do you like that look? Because for me, I've always felt that like a dewier kind of wet looking face emphasizes texture, but maybe, maybe I'm crazy town. I mean, maybe I need to lean into the dewier look because I will say I love this foundation aside from the fact that it's just a little bit dewier for my preferences. I mean, you saw how many breakouts and how much redness I had on my face before. I feel like you can't even tell that I have that right now. And yet it looks so skin-like. It looks not like I'm wearing a super full coverage foundation, but just like I have a lot of really good skincare on, and maybe something more light coverage. This is such a beautiful formula. I don't think it should be forgotten. I hope you enjoyed this video and you found some inspiration to maybe check out some old products in your collection as well. If you made it this far, I appreciate you. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next one.